Well, good afternoon and a warm welcome back to the channel. I've recently taken a three day trip to Northern Ireland, a bit of a nostalgia trip. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and watch the video. So it's a slightly overcast, relatively pleasant, nice and dry ride up to Liverpool, about 250 miles. I've got 105 miles under my belt currently. Um, you'll also see I've got a new addition for those of you that watch the channel regularly. Um, I've actually put my phone on the handlebars. Now I've got to say, I'm very much against it because I think it's just another distraction, but I am trying desperately to find out whether or not I can actually get the connected app to work. Now I am navigating with the connected app and he is reading out directions as I go, but equally I've lost my uh, miles per hour on the TFT screen, so that side of it is actually disconnected. But anyway, it is what it is. So why am I going to Northern Ireland? Well, way back in the mid 80s through till the early noughties, I think probably technically 85 to 2002, I quite regularly travelled to Northern Ireland for a company I worked for at the time, Draper Tools, and it was fantastic. They had troubles at that time, of course. Um, this was pre the Good Friday Agreement and the peace process and all of that. So there were some, um, there were some relatively hairy things going on, but I was always welcomed as an Englishman um, by my colleagues there and they always did a fantastic job of, of selling basically one of the best areas that certainly Drape had at the time. I've no idea whether it still is but, uh, but I suspect so. So I'm going to do a little bit of motorcycling, I'm going to see some of the uh, sites that you would expect to see, the Giants Causeway, Bush Mills Distillery, I'm going to go down to Enniskillen and look at the uh, loch down there, I'm going to do some travelling around Loch Ney, uh, all around, uh, well all, all the counties basically, the six counties of Northern Ireland, so hopefully we'll get a decent amount of footage. I'm going to be travelling on the ferry tonight, so it's a night ferry, uh, leaving at 10.30 from Liverpool and arriving into Belfast Port at, I think, 6.30 tomorrow morning, that's Wednesday. I'll then be travelling Northern Ireland Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and actually catching the return night boat on Friday night from Belfast, leaving 10.30 at night and arriving back in Liverpool at 6.30 in the morning and then home by, I'm guessing, sometime around midday on Saturday. So, let's see if we can get some footage. I hope you enjoy the trip with me. I'm really looking forward to the trip, not just for the motorcycling and the uh, scenery and, and places that I might see, but also to catch up with a lot of people that we had such great and productive times with back in those latter years of the 80s, 90s and early noughties. So stick around and let's see what we get. I'm not going to bore you with the trip on the uh, motorway. I've got about another 150 miles to do with 108 under my belt, but I maybe will switch the cameras on once we're loading on the ferry and then maybe loading out the other side and then we'll have a trip around Northern Ireland together.
So there we are. Il est arrivé en Belfast. Um, looks like it might be a bit of a slow trudge out. Um, might actually go around the outside of them, but maybe I should play by the rules. Anyway, we have arrived. Reasonable night. Um, all seems a little bit hectic when you're just getting back off the boat again, no matter what you do, it all seems to come together too quickly. But anyway, we are on our way and hopefully we'll get to Londonderry today, around the North Antrim coast. And although it looks a little bit gloomy, well, it looks very gloomy um, and it's definitely been raining, so we're going to get wet. But um, let's enjoy the few days. Well, the weather's not fantastic, but uh, it is, well, I'd like to say improving, but it's a little bit on and off. Um, I've just come through Draper's Town. Behind me is Loch Ney. Um, this would be stunning if it were a little brighter. I mean, it's stunning anyway, but it would be stunning if it were a little brighter. Um, it's just going through the mountain pass um, up from Loch Ney out towards Londonderry. So, well, I have to call it London Derry Derry, I think, or Derry London Derry. So we please both sides of the uh, Northern Irish argument. But anyway, um, you know, the weather, it is a dampener. No matter what you say, it would be lovely to have dry roads and the sun out. But I'm enjoying myself. Um, got to be a little bit more careful on the on the corners, although most of them are a little, are, are, are quite grippy, but you do come across the odd slippy area but um, sh as I say shame the weather's not a little better for me but I'm out on the motorcycle and I'm in some beautiful countryside here in Northern Ireland absolutely stunning down here there's a river running down in the valley um, oh this would be just superb with the sun out and in the warm, but uh, it's great even though it's raining. Well, I'm becoming quite a legend for picking these tracks with grass down the middle. <laughs> Actually, that's moss, but there has been some grass. Um, I pick them on the map because they look like nice routes through the mountains. This is the Sperrin Mountains. Um, as I say, I'm wending my way very gently up to Londonderry and we've come across a flock of sheep. Um, but as you can see, it is absolutely beautiful. But uh, just a shame that the weather hasn't really held for us. Although, actually in this valley, it's, it's become, you know, relatively, relatively little microclimate. Loving it. Just loving it. Maybe these sheep should have gone the other way, but hey, <laughs> what can I do? clear of the sheep. <laughs> Always happens to me. Anyway, it's, um, I mean, it's wonderful up here. Imagine if it were in the sunshine. I know I keep harping on about the weather, but just imagine. Um, I'm very much in sheep country here though, so perhaps take it a little bit easy in case one suddenly appears from out of the ditch. So we've arrived after some wending through the Sperrin Mountains to 
London Derry Derry and it really depends which side of the political divide you are as to what you call it. The Unionist Protestant side would call it um, London Derry because of the London associating it with the United Kingdom whereas the Unionist Catholic side would call it Derry as that's it's probably I guess don't know my history totally here but I guess that was its original name um, way back when Ireland was united. Anyway, um, we're not going to get into the politics of Northern Ireland too much while we're here. I hope I went through all of that in the 80s, 90s and noughties. But so we find our way onto the Causeway coastal route which will take us all the way across the top of the North Antrim coast and the Giants Causeway and the Rope Bridge. Um, we have now sort of dried up pretty well totally now dry roads but damp in places but scenery is starting to improve and I'm hoping in a moment literally probably just around these next few corners that we will see the coast and as we used to say when we were but tiny children if I stand I can see the sea. <laughs> so there we are. And it started to rain again. But hey, it's um, it's not just about sunshine. So we've uh, just come out of the village of Bush Mills, famous for its whiskey. I'm not sure whether we should be spelling that just with a Y or with an EY, but anyway, um, if you look it up and you're not familiar with it, Bush Mills whiskey is pretty famous whiskey. And literally a couple of miles down the road is the all equally famous Giant's Causeway. So we're going to have a look at that if we can. If not, we'll turn around. I expect uh, there's a huge amount of wind in this video, but traveling, motorcycling on your own um, has its attractions. I mean, obviously I miss the interaction with people, but it does mean you can do precisely what you want to do, which is, uh, which is nice in itself. I've just actually taken a trip down to the Giant's Causeway, and that's just spectacular. I mean, I think it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but I mean, it's just totally natural, and these huge pillars coming up out of the ocean is just unbelievable. And then I'm now coming down to the uh, Carricka Reed, I think it is, uh, rope bridge. Unfortunately, it's shut um, because of COVID. They can't socially distance on a rope bridge. Um, but despite the fact that this isn't great weather, I mean, you just need to look. Absolutely spectacular. So, um, whilst as I say the weather's not great, motorcycling takes the weather with it. You know, the sunny weather we get 200% of what anyone else gets. The rainy weather we just get 100% of what everybody else gets. It's never less than 100%. So I'm having a great time on my own and just loving the scenery, forgetting about the weather. I can tell you though, if you want to come to this coast in the sunny weather it would be absolutely stunning. So we'll see you in a bit.
Okay, so the day has certainly started better. It's just gone nine o'clock and I'm just leaving Armagh City and heading my way up to the, well, back up towards Belfast. Actually, I'm starting the trip at Bangor, which is just around the coast from just south of, um, of Belfast. And I will be traveling around Strangford Lock and down the Mourne Mountain uh, Country Road down to Newcastle and back up to Newry. Um, it's looking like it's going to rain a little bit later this afternoon so I'm going to try and get that done as quickly as I can and of course with prevailing weather coming from the west in the United Kingdom or in fact across Ireland of course it's generally the west that gets the rain earlier than the east does because it's generally coming off the Atlantic so that's the gamble I'm taking and I'm hoping that I'll get at least four or five hours riding in before we get downpours of rain but we'll see how that goes yesterday it rained and it didn't spoil the day so let's look forward to it hopefully get you some footage And here we are then, coming into Porter Ferry, and um, I've got to say that that's what I love about Northern Ireland. You can see it's started to drizzle and get a bit misty again, but um, literally I have done 11 miles getting to this ferry, and I could have 11 miles back gone two miles, but there's a sign that said Porter Ferry via Scenic Loop. Well, why wouldn't you want to do an 11 mile scenic route rather than a direct, in fact there it is, Bally Quinn scenic loop. So they do a lot of scenic loops when actually you can get somewhere far quicker. So incredibly motorcycle friendly. Apart from the weather of course, which is now starting to get quite persistent, but hey, we're still loving it. So here we are on the run into the Strangford Ferry, which will take us across Strangford Loch um, to the other side, and then we'll be carrying on with the Mourne Coastal Route. As it says there, Mourne Coastal Route and St Patrick's Trail, please use ferry. Bit of a one-way system into the ferry, I've just discovered. I guess this is to stop traffic queuing way into the town for the Strangford Lock Ferry, because we've got to come all the way down here and then double back on ourselves, but not too much of an issue. As long as the ferry doesn't go without us, of course. 
<coughs> so there is the Strangford Loch Ferry. Okay, so we're not expecting too much rain, although it is actually currently raining a little at the moment. But um, we're just in front of us there are the Mourne Mountains. I've just come through Newry and I'm going to do the bottom half of the Mourne coastal route. So uh, what we just went through there was the Warren Point Bay and we're heading up now to Carlingford and Kilkeel and then we'll head all the way up past Newcastle and up to Newtonards and just to complete the trip which has been absolutely fantastic despite the fact that it has absolutely lashed it down particularly yesterday afternoon um, I'm finishing off the trip by fixing the Northern Ireland protocol with um, hopefully one of the Northern Ireland MPs. I jest, of course, but um, I am actually meeting a Northern Ireland MP a little bit later at Newtonards, and uh, it's a guy called Jim Shannon, who actually was the person, when I was listening to Parliament, who suggested you could do little better than taking your holiday in these COVID times in the safety of Northern Ireland, and I've taken him at his word, and he's been a gentleman, and... It absolutely has been a fantastic trip. Both, um, both the scenery, the riding, the places to look at, and more so the people. I mean, I used to travel out here, as you know, between uh, 85 and 2002, um, working with the people over here, both customers and um, colleagues. And uh, I've seen them all, and uh, not all the customers, but I've seen all of the colleagues and, um, and their wives or um, partners, it's just been fantastic. So I've had a fantastic time, looking forward to coming back and it's definitely not going to be 19 years next time. So let's see if we can get some scenery despite the weather, as it should improve as the day goes on. So as many of you may know, I've been having all kinds of issues with the connected app on my phone, um, but I have now set it to drive to Newtonards. You can see the weather has improved a little bit and the roads are virtually dry now. Um, so I have literally set it to Newtonards at the top of, um, just got to get these right now, Strangford Lock. and. I have set it to mid-winding roads. So let's have a look to see where it takes us. And that will improve its credibility in my eyes if it brings it to a, a decent curvy route that doesn't go too far off the track, but um, at least gives us a little bit of fun. And of course, immediately that happens. I have the DPD van in front of me, but let's hope he pulls off very shortly. And then we can get rolling.
So we managed to keep the weather and just a final blast for the day. It's quarter past three, so if I can get an hour or hour and a half north of Belfast, so I'm now north of Carrick Fergus on the Causeway um, coastal route. And if I can just get an hour, hour and a half up, I'll probably have to retrace my steps, but should be a pretty scenic route, maybe even some decent footage. <laughs> is all I can say. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not 110 miles an hour and scratching and everything else, but look on the right, look on the left, and look at no traffic, at least going away from me. National speed limit, life is good. Almost my face is split in half with the grin.
my god. Just look at all of this. So whilst the weather wasn't exactly kind to me in Northern Ireland, I still thoroughly recommend it as a motorcycling trip. I spent three days fully entertained, great scenery, great roads, great time. A special thanks go to my ex-colleagues, so to Robbie and his wife Elaine, to Johnny and Colin who looked after me on my first night in Armagh, and to George and Gladys who looked after me on my second night in Armagh, and also to Dennis and Jill Wilson from Wilson's of Glenavy, who were just about our best customer in Northern Ireland. And it was great to catch up with you guys as well. So as you can tell, I've had a fantastic time. If you've liked this video, Give it a thumbs up, that always helps the channel. Leave any comments down below. I try to answer 100% of your comments, as you know. And I'll also leave a link to my GPX sat-nav file that I, um, that I tracked as I went round there. You'll have to iron out some of the wrong turns I may have taken, but it'll give you some idea of where I went. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. It'd be great to have you along, and you can do all of that. Thumbs up, subscribe, comment, while you're watching these few stills from the trip on the outro. In the meantime, ride safe, stay safe. We'll see you next time and thanks for watching. Bye bye.